Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Lucy and today I've got the get to know the fantasy reader tag video. Okay, so I will link below the original creator for this tag who is called The Book Pusher. So I'll leave them linked down below. So let's get straight into this. Question one is, what is your fantasy origin story? How you came to read your first fantasy novel? Okay, so the one that I personally read myself and it wasn't read to me was, I can't even remember, it was like the Rainbow Girls or something like that. That was probably the first fantasy book that I read because it was about fairies <laughs> and they all had like, it was all like Lucy and the Diamond um, fairy or like Ruby and the Red fairy. I don't know, it was all those sort of like, it's not alliteration but like those sort of titles that sort of just go well together yeah that was probably the first fantasy novel that i read independently and i absolutely loved them they were so cute and i can't really i i cannot remember what like each one of them were about individually all i know is that there was fairies in it and they were all named after like common names in my country and it was a fun time <laughs> it was a fun time. So question two is, if you could be the hero slash heroine in a fantasy novel, who would be the author and what's one trope you'd insist in this be in the story? Oh my goodness, okay. Who would I want to write me as the heroine in a story? Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm in like two minds because I'm like Sarah J Mass because I know that everything will work out fine for me. <laughs> but then also Brandon Sanderson because I'm like it would be an epic tale. But also not necessarily a happy tale. Whereas like SGM it will be fine. Like everything turns out fine. So either one of them, I think. I'll probably have to go with Brandon Sanderson just just for it to be like a lot more epic, you know. And a trope that I would want him to use. Um I feel as though I I really kind of hate reading this sometimes. Like it depends how the author does it. But I think I would actually want the chosen one trope for me because I'd be like I'm the one for all the power and I've got to save the day. Like I think, like, I would just relish in that. <laughs> so number three is, what is a fantasy you've read this year that you want more people to read? Okay, I think we're gonna have to check Storygraph because your girl cannot remember what she has read. <laughs> okay, well, I will say, I feel like everyone should read Elantris, but that's not necessarily a book that I want more people to read. It's just a lot of people have already read it and I'm just not catching up to it, but that's one I really liked. Okay, one I would say is All Our Hidden Gifts by Caroline, Caroline O'Donoghue. Now, this is a contemporary fantasy book and I don't see, like when I see fantasy readers, the majority of what I see is sort of like, you know, the Robin Hobb, the Brandon Sanderson, like it's all very, um, it's not, it's historical based fantasy. I don't see a lot of people reading like contemporary fantasy. Um, and I really enjoyed this book. So I feel as though I'd want more people to read it. It is YA as well. I should clarify that. So if you don't like YA, don't read it because it very much is YA. But I really did enjoy it and I would like to discuss that with more people. Please. <laughs> Number four, what is your favourite fantasy subgenre? What subgenre have you not read much from? Um, so I would probably say my favourite subgenre is fantasy romance. Um, I feel as though I need some semblance of romance in every story I read, unless it's like non-fiction. Um, but I wouldn't actually say that I read a lot of it. Like, I hardly read a lot of it. I really don't read a lot of like whimsical 
fantasy or lyrical fantasy like the night circus and that sort of stuff not my vibe not for me um i do like reading historical fantasy though like 19th century historical not quite medieval but <laughs> Like, yeah, maybe like 18th, 19th century. 18th century would be pretty fun, actually. I like reading 18th century. Kind of like the David Vitaly, that's in the 18th. Um, like, I did enjoy the Infernal Devices. Like, I enjoyed the time period more than the actual plot of the book. Um, and that was the 19th century. So I do enjoy that sort of time period of historical fantasy. Uh, number five, who is one of your auto buy fantasy authors? So I'm gonna have to be really basic and say Sarah J Mass. I own everything of her apart from like Catwoman and like I don't have any intentions of reading that. But like I own all of Akita, all of Crescent City and all of Throne of Glass, I, I own of hers. Um, so she is definitely an auto buy author. Um, I'm getting Brandon Sanderson more into, like I own Skyward, I own Mistborn, I own, like I've read Elantris, I don't own it, but I've read it. So I wouldn't necessarily use an author by author, but it's an author that I want to read from. Who else would I automatically buy from if they published a new book? Yeah, I'm so, I'm just gonna have to say Sarah J Mass. I'm sorry, I'm basic. <laughs> so number six, how do you typically find fantasy recommendations? Booktube is probably my main source and also Instagram. Um, but I would say definitely Booktube. Like if I'm following someone and they do a vlog and they read this fantasy book, I'm more likely to pick up their book rather than me seeing a post about it on Instagram. But um, normally I see the same book cover dotted around a few times on Instagram, then someone pops up in my YouTube feed like, I just bought this book. And then I'm like, oh, that sounds intriguing. And then I take the plunge. Like I always feel as though I need to see the book once or twice around somewhere. Um, I'm just getting into sort of like TikTok recommendations as well. Um, so I did buy a book, Anatomy, quite recently, um, which was off of a TikTok recommendation. So you never know. But yes, and also my friends, like a lot of my friends online are booktubers. So whenever they read something, they yell about it to me. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll buy it. I'll buy it, don't worry. <laughs> so number seven, what is an upcoming fantasy release you're excited for? Um, I don't know, I'm really bad at knowing when books are coming out. Eep. Um, I was, well, I was excited for House of Sky and Breath but then I read the book. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll say on that matter. Um, mm, oh, um, Foul Lady Fortune, I'm excited about by Chloe Gong. I'm excited for that to come out, but I need to read her first two books first. Again, another thing, I need to catch up on books. Um, so yeah, I'll probably say that book is like, I think I've already pre-ordered it actually. Have I? I can't remember. I think I have, I can't remember. If it turns up, it turns up. <laughs> so number eight, what is one misconception about fantasy you would like to reset? Um, Probably that everything is Harry Potter and Star Wars. Like not everything is of that criteria. Um, I feel as though I say fantasy and people think like, I don't know like swords and like which is a major part of fantasy I grant you but like there's more to it than just like a battlefield <laughs> um like there's so many different sub genres to it that there is more than just like military fantasy there's so much more there's you know fantasy romance historical there's whimsical there's you know like you know just so much so that's probably one stereotype that i want to lay to rest um and also another stereotype is that it's like hard to get into and that is like dense to read a fantasy which i can understand because like the length of a fantasy book is sometimes a lot longer than an average like 
um, general literature is. But I think people also think that the writing is going to be a lot denser. And I don't think that that's correct at all. I feel like, yes, there are like language that is added into a fantasy book. Maybe there's a made up language or um, new terminology to learn, but I don't think that means that it's particularly hard to get into because a lot of the fantasy authors that I read are very easy to read and they like incorporate this the new terminology that they use quite well. The so number nine, if someone had never read a fantasy before and asked you to re recommend the first three books that come to mind as places to start, what would you what would those recommendations be? Okay, um I think I would say if they've never read a fantasy book before, I would probably assume that they haven't read any sort of like overarching plot stories like like a large series before or maybe they're just getting into like adult books as well so I would probably recommend Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas I, I know it's a long series but it's so easy to write and it and it does start as YA so I, I think it's a very good transitional series to like grow into like more sort of like world building of a fantasy story or fantasy series so I recommend that Throne of Glass. Mm. I would also recommend the David Bad trilogy starting with City of Brass um, by S.A. Shakabalti. This reads so easily there is a lot of world building in this but me personally I did not have a problem with it and it flowed very easily and very nicely and like very smoothly for me so um and that's more of a historical, and that's like a historical fantasy. It's set in 18th century, and it begins in the real world. Like it begins in Cairo, uh, in a place that doesn't have any sort of fantastical elements to it. And then you get thrown into a fantastical world. So you're learning with the reader all of these new elements in this world. So I would say that's a very good place to start in terms of like, world building and learning new terminology learning new like more of the plot I think that would be a very good book to start with and the third one ooh la la what should I choose what should I choose I would say Law by Alexandra Bracken I believe is their name um this is a standalone fantasy book and I think that's going to be very good for someone who's starting out so they're not sort of overwhelmed by the fact like oh my god I've got to read eight books like this is just one book like I feel so that would be very manageable for someone and again this is a contemporary fantasy so it's set in the real world but there is fantastical elements to it so I think it's quite an easy book to read from first because you know you have it's set in New York so you have the background of New York that a lot of people would be familiar with so like if you're walking down Fifth Avenue you could picture that quite easily as opposed to something like Valbara you know it will be a lot easier for people to do that so I think that would be a good book starting point and number 10 who is the most recent fantasy reading content creator you came across that you'd like to shout out oh okay um the one that i've most recently come across is covers with cassidy because she's now because she is hosting a readathon in april called ramathon and it's basically a whole readathon to read more fantasy books so i feel as who this is the perfect um person to shout out okay you guys well that is the whole tag done all the 10 questions have been answered <laughs> and let me know in the comments what your answers to this tag would be whether or not you're a fantasy reader like what three fantasy books would you recommend to a person who's never read fantasy before i would really love to know uh, if you did manage to get to the end of the video and you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what to comment please can you leave me a dragon emoji because Covers with Cassidy loves dragons. I feel like that fits. Alright guys, I hope you guys are all well and safe. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!